Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper, or welcome if this is your first time. And for those of you who are patient, loyal uh, community members and subscribers of my channel, thanks for your patience as we navigated an illness in the family this week and I had to kind of get somebody to and from the doctor more than I normally would. And so I was not able to get as much filmed this week, but I am ready to get some stuff uh, filmed and edited and posted very, very soon. So thank you for just hanging in there with me while we were going through this. So I am really noticing how I'm feeling about spring, about the flowers and things that are blooming. My daughter, Sarah, and I this past weekend went to a birthday party and our trip was a bit long. And so we just looked at all of the crepe myrtles and the azaleas and the there's a, a bush that we used to have in our old house that had the little white clusters and it was like a bridal something. Um, those of you who are more in tune with the names of, of flowers probably know the wisteria is everywhere. And it just got me thinking about spring and how much I want to read some books in the month of April that are set in spring or are spring like. Some of these I've already read, and then some of them I really want to get to. They may not all be spring. You can't always tell by the synopsis, and I can't always rely on my memory for them to have been set in spring, but I think that they are, or they have something hopefully to do with flowers or plants. So let's get started. So the first one is Death by Darjeeling by Laura Childs. This is number one in her Tea Shop Mystery series, and I really enjoy this one more than I enjoy the one about scrapbooking. Laura Childs is a pretty prolific uh, writer, but this one, of course, what happens in all of these mysteries is that somebody is uh, found dead. And so then Theodosia, who is the main character and owns the tea shop, is in charge of, so to speak, trying to help figure out who may have murdered this person. And I really, really liked it. And I think you will too, if you love books about flowers, the South and historical places and murder mysteries, cozies for sure. All right, the next one is At Home in Midford by Jan Caron. And I read this one a few years ago. I gave away this first book in the series, but I have a couple others that I have collected and I just didn't get back to it. I'd like to reread this first one in the series before I get to the next few. There are at least, at the time of this publication, 24 in this series, so it's a commitment. I think I added this to my series tracker in my bullet journal. This is not a murder mystery, as I recall. This is a neighborhood community. It follows the main character, Father Tim, who is a bachelor, he's the rector and he is kind of helping the town stay, you know, in their spiritual practices. He finds a dog that is just sweet and lovely and he can't sort of shake the dog. <laughs> and he helps some of the people in the community with a variety of things that occur for them. And I think he does meet somebody that may end up being a romantic interest for him too. So I loved this and I... I just remember it feeling light and springy and beautiful. And I think this one is actually set in spring or at least close to it. It may not be set in spring, but I remember it feeling really cozy and this would be a good time to get back to it. And then The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly is another one that I read some time ago now, and it was actually a NetGalley review for me. I had been gifted this one as a, an advanced reader copy, and I really enjoyed this one. It is a dual timeline, and what I liked about it was that it was about this family, this couple, I don't know that they even had children, and they reach out to this woman who designs gardens for a living, and the garden that is um, around this historic home in England that they have purchased and are trying to renovate needs a lot of help as well, and so they hire her to renovate this garden. Then you discover that the origins of this garden obviously go way back, and this tells the story of how the garden was created initially by a garden designer as well, and how that family was approaching the you know, the, the construction of the garden, as well as what some of the things that were happening at that time. So I remember just loving this book and I, I gave it a four-star review and a four-star rating. I 
just loved the way that the character development weaved through the story and really, I guess, captured the connection to this garden and to this place and this home. I just really remember enjoying it a lot. So I definitely recommend that one too. I would read another book by Julia Kelly for sure. Now to the ones I haven't read, but I've had for a bit of time. This would be a backlist um, possibility for me, this TBR, The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. This is one of my favorite editions of this book. I've had this for a while. It's a chunker, although obviously this is a smaller size than a full size book, but this one isn't, it isn't small. And Kate Morton's are often dual timelines as well. What happens when the secrets of one family tear another family apart is the blurb on the back of this book. The cover of this one in other um, editions is just gorgeous and very lush and has a lot of flowers on it. So if that really appeals to you, these are harder to find too than those. So that's important for you to know. So this one is about a woman named Cassandra who's grieving the loss of her grandmother now. And after her grandmother now dies, she discovers some things that she didn't know that really turn her world on its axis. And she's challenged to really understand some things about her family that she didn't realize were true. And then of course, to recreate and, and discover a new way of living with what she now knows and, and what she's experiencing. I really need to get to this and this would be a perfect month to do that, I think. And yeah, I'm down for that. And I think I have that uh, access to that book on audio. I would love to finish this one. I recently hauled this one. You may remember, Welcome to Jubilee. Look how spring-like that looks. <laughs> I mean, you just can't beat it. And this one is about Madeline, who is has been a romance author, and her marriage falls apart. And so she takes off to a place in the Blue Ridge Mountains and has a little bit of a retreat and a sort of what's next for me now. I love these kinds of books, and this one would be a quick read for me. So that's a possibility. I've had this one on my backlist for a really long time. This is The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenbach. I will say that when I purchased this book, I was still working to some degree in the foster care um, system, if you will, and working with victims of abuse and neglect. And I think it was just not something I was wanting to read in my spare time. This came out in 2011, and I was still in the thick of that work at that time. It is though about a child who's been in the foster care system and she's aging out and she now discovers that she has this place that she can create a garden for herself and she's really, really connected to the language of flowers and what flowers do for people internally and, and just the beauty of them. I would love to get to this. It's not very big. I feel like I could do it. It has lots of great blurbs from great authors that I have read and followed. Jamie Ford loved it, and as did Paula McLean and Adriana Trigiani. A good spring read for me, for sure. So those are the ones that I own physically. These are the books that I don't own that I'm really kind of excited about. The first one is The Midnight Gardening Club. No, sorry, The Moonlight Gardening Club by Rosie Hannigan. And I just discovered this by accident. I can't even remember how this came to me, but it has a 4.24 rating on Goodreads. It says new friends, new beginnings, old secrets. So these are very connected, all of these to sort of that same trope, if you will. But this one is about a couple of women in Ireland, which made it exciting to me. And they discover that there is a moonlight gardening club that reminds its members that beauty comes in the night with flowers as well, which I just love. I love a beautiful moonlight garden. There aren't as many of those around uh, that uh, as I think there could be, right? So they begin to really enjoy each other's company and, and create and support this garden and watch their friendship bloom as along with the flowers that they are planting and tending. But then they discover some things about their past and there's some things that occur and their friendship is maybe tested by this. And I don't know what that might be, but it sounds fascinating to me. It doesn't have a big following of readers, but the ones that have read it are really 
thrilled by it. And it is a contemporary women's fiction or chick lit, if you will. Um, that's the category. So I don't think it goes into histories too far in the past, but it definitely does stir up some things that happened in their pasts. The next one I heard about, I think, on a podcast. It may have been currently reading, but it may not have been. This one is called Marrying the Ketchups by Jennifer Close. I love this cover, but also you're going to know why I want to read this book when I read this synopsis to you. Here are the three things the Sullivan family knows to be true. The Chicago Cubs will always be the underdogs. Historical progress is inevitable. And their grandfather, Bud, founder of J.P. Sullivan's, will always make the best burgers in Oak Park. But when, over the course of three strange months, the Cubs win the World Series, Trump is elected president, and Bud drops dead, suddenly everyone in the family finds themselves doubting everything they hold dear. This may not politically be the book that some of you will enjoy, but I love the baseball aspect of this, and I think that it is going to be amazing. It does seem like it's funny, and I again, it's a book set in Chicago related to baseball in the spring when baseball season is about to kick in. The opener is about to happen next week, and I am there for it, so... Marrying the Ketchups is definitely on my list. All right, we're back in Ireland, Dublin, The Flower Arrangement by Ella Griffin. This is one that I happened upon by accident when I was looking for books that were set in spring. This is about a woman whose name is Laura, and she is able to make magical flower arrangements that connect people emotionally to something that needs to happen for them that will change their heart and their life, which yeah, it just seems like a great plot to me. It says a delightful cast of characters. It's warm, witty, and her wisdom to tell a captivating tale is woven around a Dublin for florist, forest, florist. Um, I think Laura also has some emotions and some healing that her own heart has to do. I love this cover and I think it would be a great read for the spring. Okay, so that's my contribution to spring. And uh, if you have a spring break in your life, or if you have a couple of days off or something that's occurring that will allow you to read some of these, I would love to hear which ones you might choose first. I do plan to immerse myself a bit in these while I'm also hopefully reading some books for the BookTube Prize in April. So this is kind of my possible pile of spring reads for April and May because May is still of course springtime for us and I'm just ready for it. I'm ready to sit outside on my couch with a cool gin and tonic or a, a, a glass of decaf iced tea unsweetened because that's my preference there and just enjoy this beauty and this the breezes and all the things that are happening this time of year and we really find spring here to be very very precious to us because it doesn't last long and then we're stuck in the humidity and the soul-sucking heat of the south so this is my time to bloom and blossom outside Thanks for watching, readers. I appreciate all of you. Hopefully, I'll have some content up um, in the next few days as well. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.